So I've been running Parrot Sec OS for several months on my laptop. I really like the distribution as my, so to speak, daily driver, daily usage. I'm not a big distro hopper, so I don't, you know, as you may hear this in the Linux world, someone who changes distributions often, not really my thing. Uh, I usually stick with one for a while. I still run Pop OS on my desktop because that question comes up a lot. Works great for my editing, my workflow, no problems. And for my laptop, I like having all the tools when I go somewhere at my fingertip to, you know, enumerate a network, uh, do some diagnostics, and have a lot of tools for everything network related or even pen testing or network enumeration related running right on my hardware uh, with this laptop. And I can still use it as my, so to speak, daily driver for doing things like VPNing back to my office to do any other work that I need to do on my own network. Now, I wanna to talk today about Parrot and using the AnonSurf function. This is really cool because it's a quick way to wrap the computer in Tor. And it, it's really easy, it's convenient, and solves some of the security problems people have when they're using Tor, which is they may launch a browser that's a Tor browser, but then they may also uh, not remember and open a link that's a non-Tor browser that was sent. And that's one of the ways they kind of find people on Tor. So if you want to make sure everything's wrapped in there, instead of just launching a Tor browser, you wrap the laptop in Tor. There's ways to do this for proxies. There's ways to do this in other distributions. They've just automated the whole process and done it very clean in ParrotSec. Now, before I jump to it, if you can do me a favor, I know it's cheesy, hit the like button. Uh, it, in our algorithm-driven life, uh, <laughs> that algorithm does help to let other people know they should probably enjoy this video as well. All right, thanks. I'll stop being whatever cheesy or however you want to call that. Back to the video. So there are different ways you can do the Anon surf. I'm going to go over here. And one, you can launch it from the command line. I prefer that method. Is like things from the command line, but it's also a non surf start, stop, change exit node, check IP, uh, set, unset the open NIC DNS service. So we'll just go ahead and sudo a non surf start. Now, right now, actually, before I even go that far, I do have this connected to PIA VPN. I do have an offer link below. If you're interested in signing up, I do like PIA. Uh, they work great with Linux, not a problem. You don't need to load their software. You can just get the OVPN files that they allow you to download and then put your username, password in and connect. So I have my office VPN. I have PIA Sweden, uh, South Africa sitting in here, and then I can load more from the command line. So I'm going from VPN already. So some level of anonymity there. We'll open up Firefox real quick. There's the start page. There's my uh, Sweden IP address there. And if we go to ifconfig.co, it shows me in Sweden. So, yep, I'm all connected. Cool. Uh, it's working. So let's go back over and start the Anon surf. Now, what this does, are you sure you want to start it. Do you want to announce it to kill dangerous applications and clean the caches? I would love for it to do that. Uh, Nonsurf is going to go ahead and clear out your DNS cache. It's going to clear out the resolver, resolving caches, essentially. It's going to close open browser windows and things using the internet because, well, if you spun up Tor and you have these connections, you're like, oh, I know who you are. You're on the Torno. You were already got you a cookie assigned over here and you were signed in with this IP address and you just suddenly moved to another IP address. Um, that is a way that you can quickly identify through indication like, hey, same person just moved IP addresses, but all the sessions didn't change. It offers to close everything for you, which is really nice. So it just closed all the browser sessions. You are now under a non-surf tunnel. And a couple options here. So I can start, stop, restart, change ID, status, and see if it's working properly. So yep, there's all the details. So easy enough to do. Let's make sure we're on the internet. Just ping anything. Hey, cool, we're pinging stuff, so I know I'm on the internet. And let's see where we popped out on the Tor node. So my VPN already put me in Sweden, so we are going for uh, from the Swedish VPN. Let's refresh the page now. To the Tor node and out some other exit node. And it may be, is it blocked? Oh, all right, DE, Germany. So. Yes, we moved over there. So now we've gone to through the Tor node out there. Now, what I said is it wraps everything in a Tor node. Let me give you an example here. If we open links, L-Y-N-X, it's a command line browser. So even things launch from the command line. 
are going to be wrapped in a Tor node. So any of the command line tools are on there. So it sees a different IP address. So right away, it goes, hey, your connection's from 162.213, also not my public IP. Once again, it's going through the Tor system and out somewhere else. So you're remaining that an anonymity while launching things from the command line as well. I've done videos on how to do this with proxy change, but you know, one of those things is when you wrap the whole computer in it, any tool I use, whether I SSH somewhere or wherever, it's all gonna be always wrapped in a Tor node because it wrapped the whole computer in there. But what if I wanna come out somewhere else because, well, people block Tor nodes, which is not a horrible idea uh, because of the anonymity level they offer, but it's also a game of uh, whack-a-mole. If you haven't heard of that, it's constantly changing. It is always a new Tor node, probably more opening up uh, from the time I started this video to the time I ended. I don't know what the statistics are, but I do know there's always more Tor nodes popping up. So that's where the change ID option comes in. So we're gonna go ahead and make this full screen. Just a lot of options that'll pop up when I do this. Change ID. What country would I like to come from? Oh, let's do everyone's favorite. Country code RU. So it takes a second here. Do, 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 all right. Identity change, let's dance again. So let's refresh the page here. And we now are in RU, so absolutely. Simple as that, uh, you can swap out to be somewhere else and search the country codes. And if you put nothing in on the change ID, it drops a list of ideas. So um, we have the Congo, we have Canada, Cape Verde. So you can make yourself appear to be coming from a lot of different options on here. And it does the searching for you to make this really easy every time it does it. Now, Tor doesn't let you get granular and that's kind of the nature of Tor. Uh, maybe I'll do a more deep dive video at some point. It's a really very interesting system. Yes, it was government funded. For those of you that are hammering, it's a government funded scam. Um, there's a lot more to it than that. Yes, it originally did receive government seed money, but think about it this way. If the government always attacked or probed the internet from the same location and no one else did, um, you kind of need your own noise and having other people on there. I could go on about this, but yes, Tor is very difficult to de-anonymize, not impossible for nation state level actors. Um, this is why when people go into Tor, they frequently VPN, then Tor, and then pick different exit nodes. Um, and read through any of the case history, follow Darknet Diaries, there's ways they find people, but it's not exactly through Tor the way you think it is. So I'll, I'll leave you with that. I can always leave links to Darknet Diaries. Actually, just go through all of Darknet Diaries if you're into hacking or into understanding how that works. Anyways, back on topic. Um, it's really easy to say uh, coming out in other countries. So let's say Denmark now. Wait a few seconds here. Identity change, let's dance again. Doesn't take long at all. Refresh the page. Come on, did we not get a new one? Huh. Oh, I wonder if it's, let's try uh, IP chicken. I wonder if it's just holding on to the cached. Yep, it is. That's. Uh, Thanks, Firefox, for caching that, but I don't want the same address returned. <laughs> um, and you can say, hey, it's Tor01. Uh, oh, that's cool. I don't know what the website is because apparently they run cybersecurity, but I'm now with Infin definitely in DK. So is it Zencurity? I think is how I would say that. One thing about Tor. Uh, yeah, cool. They offered pen test services and run a Tor node. Thank you folks over at Zencurity APS. Uh, but this is one thing about Tor is no, you don't use this for downloading torrents, uh, despite the names having similarities or not the same thing. That's a misconception. Also, it's going to be slower. Your speed tests, everything is going to be much slower on Tor. Due to the way Tor works and due to the great level of an anonymity you can get with Tor, uh, there are some trade-offs. One of them is definitely speed, the way it bounces through the nodes to lose your identity from where you went in to where you came out, uh, that is going to cause a substantial slowdown. Uh, mostly this is gonna be used for if you're doing like external uh, scans on clients uh, at the request. This is not something when you don't want it requested. Um, you want to do this to be able to come in from different angles and see what their attack surface looks like. Tor makes it really handy. Combine that with all the tools I have on here and being able to quickly swap to different Tor nodes because this is how you would easily evade like a pattern recognition system 
system so they don't see you coming from the same address even if it is a Tor node all the time uh, because it would get blocked. So when you're doing your probes or doing your uh, assessments for a client for external vulnerabilities, this is just conveniently built in. This is actually why Xavier likes this as well because uh, that's a lot of what he does in his day job. But, but that's it for the application. It works that simple. Um, I like the way that it just quickly can change back and forth to a non-surf and we'll go back to the real world uh, just by stopping it. So a non-surf stop, say yes. We go through the process again of clearing out all the cache. All the things I did on tour now get wiped out, cleaned out, and the browsers got closed and restarted. And the whole time, if you didn't notice up here at the top, actually we'll just open up the main browser and show you as soon as it's done. Global anonymous proxy closed, stop dancing. So uh, go here, start Firefox. And you notice still right at the top here, my PIA VPN is still there. So it still uses the PIA VPN to go out with Tor. So it's still going there. And when it changes and cleans it all back out, I'm still on PIA VPN. So uh, if I go to, I don't think it's blocked on PIA. Hey, cool. Now we're back in uh, Sweden. And we can just do this slash country. Sweden. And now the last thing I'll do is VPN connection. Turn it off. So I'm back in. It's going to take a second to load. <laughs> it's caching it. There we go. United States. So that's it from Sweden to tour to back to Sweden, back to the United States. It, they make it really simple in Parrot. Uh, it's not the complex complex or convoluted process I've done with some of the other ones. And you don't need to even use proxy chains like I've talked about before, which a lot of people, and proxy change is so great tool, but you can use it for other things as well. But a lot of people would use proxy change so they can wrap each thing in Tor. This is nice wrapping the whole computer in it and uh, with a few clicks of a button and then unwrapping it with another click. So uh, that was it. Uh, check out Parrot. They do have that new website, uh, parrot.sh. where you can download it. Um, yeah, give it a try. I really like Parrot OS. I've had no um, daily usage problems using it, even for all my just general work and things like that. Uh, definitely say it's a great system. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.